Sambo and I'm here in Singapore in the downtown core area of Singapore and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Jacqueline Jane all the way from Australia. Correct. Yes, uh, who is a cybersecurity expert and she'll be joining us to talk about everything about phishing psychology. So thank you so much Jacqueline for your time today. You are welcome and hello everyone. Yes, yeah. So Jacqueline, <laughs> you studied a lot about the psychology behind, you know, yes. phishing and when we talk about psychology it's about not just a Hum well, the, the victim psychology, but it's also the hacker psychology, Correct, right? Yeah. And, you know, we hear phishing is a long-standing issue for, what, more than two decades. Oh, yeah. And uh, a lot of the growth, I guess, in the last two decades is because more and more of us are getting online. Correct. But, of course, uh, as well, the hackers have more and more access to tools. So we're no longer talking about sophisticated, you know, uh, state-sponsored actors or, or cyber criminals, even maybe some teenager who have access to phishing as a tool, right? Exactly. So what are yes. your thoughts? Look, it's one of those challenges that we face more and more these days. If we think about before the internet, what were the con artists doing at the time or the, the criminals who were trying to get hold of our money? They'd use snail mail, send things in the mm. post, or find other ways to entrap us with those games that used to be on movies You've probably seen them, folks, you know, with the follow the ball and, you know, bet money to see what would happen. With the internet, what has happened over time is the more and more we've relied on the likes of email to communicate, cyber criminals have decided, hmm, let's use this as a tool to entrap people. And the way they do it is through social engineering. Now, some of you would have heard of social engineering. It's the way to manipulate us as humans to do something we normally wouldn't do. And normally that comes down to an emotional response. And um, the biggest one is fear. So when you get that malicious email that says, if you don't click here and give us your details, you'll be arrested. Or click here, we need to change your password. You've got 24 hours or you lose access. More and more of us are clicking on these things and engaging without realizing That's the right. danger. So it's of the emotions, it's um, that human response we have. You may have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That's how we respond to these things and cyber criminals are clever. They've worked out that we're the path of least resistance and it's the way they get through to our personal devices mm -hmm. and at work as well. Yeah, you talk about our fear. Yeah. As and obviously fear is also uh, one of the top uh, sort of emotional triggers, but as well Correct. as uh, greed as well, right? Yes, and absolutely. And there's a, a lot of other emotional triggers. Yeah. Um, so I want to just go back to the motivation. So it's not yes. just about the money, right? It's also sometimes about, if you talk about state-sponsored actors, it's Correct. about disruption, it's yeah. about taking, stealing corporate data, intellectual property as well, isn't it? Exactly. And there's there's two very different sides to what cyber criminals try to do. Um, from a personal perspective, from individuals, from humans, the end user, they're after access to our information. Mm -hmm. Because with that access, they can steal money, they can steal our identity. When it comes to the other side of business or corporates, organisations, governments, their whole point is to get into the system to, yes, hopefully in their eyes, deploy ransomware, which is malicious software says if you don't pay us money, we won't give you access to your systems. And it could even be just for reputational damage reasons to cause a system shutdown. Um, there's very few times that cyber criminals will do this for fun used to be in the early days of hackers, they did it for fun, just to say, I broke into right. MIT. I or can do it. Correct. Yeah, it's a and bragging right, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and now I found out that uh, cyber crime is actually one of the top three most profitable business models globally. Yeah, I think and that's too. terrifying. It's cross-border and it's very difficult to catch uh, these uh, criminals. Yes, it's and nearly impossible. There's no borders, mm -hmm. so it can take years to infiltrate a crime gang. And it's not just the phishing either, the malicious email. It's also the voice version of phishing, which is vishing. This is the yeah, ishing I family. To that. Yes, yes, it's that's right. very scary because we get phone calls, a real person or a recorded message, and they're nearly always fear related or something you need to do. Um, and then we have smishing, which is the SMS that's version right. of phishing. Yes. And then, of course, QR code yeah. phishing, quishing. Yeah, that's so right, that's right. there's so many. From the human, us, the end user point of view, we need to be aware of anything incoming. 
that you haven't really planned for has a link or asks you to do something, just don't. Yes. So talking about that, right? Their ultimate aim is to get us to click on that Correct. link. Yes. But it's not always clicking on a link, right? It's sometimes, um, like you say, it's uh, when it comes to QR code, it's scanning yes. that image. Yes. And with uh, voice uh, phishing, is um, I guess uh, it's. Uh, getting us to download an app or something like that. Exactly, exactly. And again, it's using our human nature, our response. So imagine if you see a QR code, click here to win. Yeah, that's playing to our greed, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. And two years ago, so not this Super Bowl, last year's American Super Bowl, a company called Coinbase, cryptocurrency company, they had a QR code bouncing around the screen as an ad during the Super Bowl. It was absolutely legitimate. It oh, wasn't it was, a scam. Okay. But 20 million people scanned that without okay. thinking. So what happened? Cyber criminals said, hmm, here's an opportunity. Let's use QR codes to capture people as well. And marketers, advertisers, communicators, all of those people in the advertising world said, let's use QR codes. So we've seen this growth of QR codes and it's become a big problem. Yeah, we talked about the uh, emotional triggers, the yes. fear, the greed, yes. um, a lot of, uh, I guess, other ones, optimism playing to you know, you won a lottery, you know, Correct. this is a free voucher or something like that. Um, but uh, there's a layer of deception that uh, really play to our sort of um, cognitive biases, isn't Correct. it? Correct, absolutely. One thing that I've discovered over many years now is if you were to send the same phishing email to 100 people, there's a certain amount that will absolutely click on it and engage with it based on their cognitive bias. So if I have an interest in saving animals, and in Australia that's the RSPCA, or I'm supporting a charity, if I see an email come through that pulls up my heartstrings right. and gets me to respond, I'm going to, based on my cognitive bias, my experience right. in life, and just who I am. That's right. But to someone else, they might not really think too much of it. But if you send a golfing email, that's a phishing email, to the same 100 people, those people who are interested and involved in golf will read it and pay attention. Yep. So the cyber criminals spend a lot of time adding sophistication to try and catch us all. As many as possible, Absolutely, isn't it? yes. So talking about that, I think the generic one is account password reset, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. The current. <laughs> Please click here, IT is asking you to change your password. That's right. Are they really? And this is the hard part, um, Jane, because people need to understand what the red flags are. And there's lots of red flags in emails that we need to be aware of, like who sent it? What time did they send it? The name of the person who sent it, grammatical errors. So, some of this can be spoofed though. Absolutely the it can. can be, yes, right? so cyber criminals have a way to, pre to pretend to be someone. Like if I take the word Woolworths, for example, um, a grocery store in Australia, and I'm sure it's elsewhere as well. So it's W-O-O-L. If you think about the first O, if you change that to another character, or you had an O next to an L and you change that to a B, my eyes will see Woolworths, even though it isn't. So mm. cyber criminals can be very clever right. in changing things around, even changing fonts. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Like the A with a round A or the little funny looking right. A. Those things we don't, as humans, pay attention. We read words that can be wrong. Our brain will That's flip right. it around That's to be right. right. It's called confirmation bias, Correct. isn't it? Correct, and gone are the days of grammatical errors from the Prince of Nigeria scams. Oh, right. <laughs> They're so much more sophisticated. And you mentioned earlier, an individual, let's say a, a curious teenager, um, could go on the deep dark web and actually buy phishing as a service. That's right. And buy all the things they need for not a lot of money. That's right, yeah, that's right. Oh, it's. It's really, really terrifying. And folks, I've fallen for a scam myself. Oh, you have? I did. All oh, right, OK. Tell I missed, I missed one thing in my research. So normally I would check, I saw it on social media, on TikTok. And I thought, oh, yes, I like this product. So I did my research. I went on their website. I had a look. And um, I thought, OK, they seem legitimate, good reviews. It wasn't new. They'd been around for a while. Went on to search engine and did a search there. What I didn't do was check reviews. If I had, I would have seen very quickly that this is a scam. I just, it was late at night, I wasn't doing my usual process, I ordered the product, it was $80, so not a huge amount, but still, me, scammed, this was last year. So I went through the process, waited for delivery, nothing. I emailed, hello, where's my product? Nothing. 
So hmm. How do you order the product online? It was online through their website, which was very legitimate. There was no red flags. So you provided your credit card details and all no, that? No, I went always through third-party payment. So I used PayPal. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't get it back because of the nature of this website was very clever. So as it turned out, when I did my further research as reviews for this company, it said, do not order from here. This is a scam. I couldn't believe it. The one thing I didn't do, which I always do, except that one time, was check reviews. Right. But the thing is that the reviews can also be faked as well, isn't it? Correct. So they you have can. to go elsewhere, not internal reviews. You have to go to Reddit or somewhere else, another social media mm, area. I see what you mean, yeah. That's and I right. thought, I can't believe this, but I'm happy to share it does happen. Yeah, so talking about, you know, we are all vulnerable to all yes. these uh, tactics uh, employed by the uh, cyber criminals. We are. There's also what they call the spear phishing, isn't it? So yes. this is really targeting senior uh, professionals in the organization. Correct. And even IT or cybersecurity professionals yes. could fall for some Absolutely. of these emails. Um, so we have the phishing, which is the general emails, which could be sent to millions of email addresses with the hope someone engages. Spear phishing is when the cyber criminal will use something called OSINT, OS open source intelligence, to gather some information specifically to maybe target an organization. Um, and then they'll get more opportunities and higher engagement in the email they send. That's the phishing email. There's a next level down as well, whale phishing. That's right. That's targeting so this, the CEO. Correct, exactly. They're targeting an individual. So if someone wanted to target me, they would do a lot of research to find out what are their chances of increasing the opportunity for me to engage. So it might come with, hello, JJ, information. Maybe they found something on my social media because mm. I hadn't locked down my privacy. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, wow, this person knows about me, knows my hobbies, knows all the things, knows I've just been traveling, and I engage with that email. And it often can be very, very simple, and the person who's that CEO or that target for that whale fishing really doesn't think about it because it looks so real. And the display name, if it comes in the form of email, could be Correct. a spoof to... Yeah. Uh, reflect someone that they know what exactly right um, so talking about um, the fact that you know uh, all of us are vulnerable um, the next level of sophistication really is using chat GPT isn't it yes AI absolutely this is where we see deep fakes now we've been using AI for many years if you do a lot of writing you might have used Grammarly or even Microsoft Word can sometimes give you ideas for the grammar we've moved to another level now where scary um, all I need is about 30 seconds, if not less, of my voice, and then I can replicate that to say anything, and it will sound like me and even look like That's me right, yeah, with enough yeah, video. Exactly. And what this means is, even at work or at home, we're seeing phone calls being made to parents saying it's not true but saying that someone has kidnapped their child and it's their child on the phone and it sounds like their child on the phone and they think oh my goodness are you okay and the child will say no i've been kidnapped they want you to pay a thousand dollars and so what do you do how do you know it's actually not your child but it sounds exactly like your child um so one thing on this while i'm mentioning it please have a code. So talk to your family and friends All right. and have a password, a code. Stranger danger when I was younger many years ago, <laughs> where my mum would say only this person or this person or this person can ever pick you up. And if anyone else does, ask them a question that only you know the answer to and that other person, like a personal type thing. So these days, please talk to your group, your family. Right, okay. That's and a have a advice. code. And we're seeing deep fakes as well from CEOs calling employees, the, yeah. demanding payment of something. That's also playing to the sort of the authority bias. Absolutely, isn't it? Like, yes. Yeah, our inherent sort of bias to listen Correct. to someone that is of higher authority and then yes. and that we have to respond quickly because if we don't pay then yep. you know something might happen to the supply line. Exactly. And the other thing is you probably have seen um, President Obama's deep fake videos, Tom Cruise deep yeah, fake yeah, videos. Yeah. And, the queen as well. and the Queen and there's Donald Trump. There's so <laughs> many. There's and we can't learn everything about all of the scams that are out there. So what we've realised many, many years ago, like anything, you need to educate and create awareness. Um, and that's what we do at Know Before, is create that opportunity for people to actually learn about all these things. It's not possible to teach everything. When it comes to cyber security and the scams and the things that we as individuals need to know, it is really challenging because it can't be once a year or 
twice a That's year. That's right. It's about constantly reminding people Absolutely. of this uh, threat out there, isn't it? Yes. And someone, I oh, can't remember who it was, I apologise, um, had an excellent analogy. When you're driving, you go past the speed limit signs every 200 metres or so. Mm. Why? That's right, yeah. To remind us, oh yes, stay, stay to the speed limit. It's the same thing with cyber security. We, how do you know what to look out for in AI unless someone tells you? Well, we talk about AI, how that can make uh, all these uh, phishing tactics even more sophisticated, oh, right? Yep. But it can also help us, right? Correct. There's a lot of work being done by us and other people in the world of cybersecurity to protect against these type of attacks. There are some fantastic things that AI can do to infiltrate the message before it even gets to the person or to preempt and say, are you sure you want to click on this? But not always at home. And that's the challenge. So the things you learn at work from a cybersecurity training, that can make a difference for you at home. Okay, so we talk about sort of the two tips that you have provided so far. So is there any last sort of tip for our audience before we end the podcast? Be active and take responsibility for your own learning. Oh, that's a good one. Because the government won't do it for you. Your parents won't do it for you. If you've got kids, you need to guide them. But if you don't know, actively talk to your people at work. Excellent. If you don't work, then there's a lot of resources. And I'll send you a whole lot of links that you could share with people oh, excellent. for resources. Because often people don't know where to start. And there's something else to consider as well is simulated phishing emails. So you can practice. Yes, yeah. It's like I practiced one of those before we There you go. <laughs> and look, the thing is, people, you don't just read piano music and then sit and play. That's right. You, you have to start from the very beginning that's... and you need to learn. So there's a bit of controversy about simulated phishing emails. But all I can say to that is if anyone's thinking about that, please remember communication is key. Talk to your people about why you're doing these things and offer opportunities for them to learn, even to help their kids and if you don't work somewhere and you haven't got that opportunity, then yes, reach out. I'm happy to help anyone. The free course is there. There's Great. a lot of resources available. Yeah, so thank you so much, Jacqueline, for your time You're today. Welcome. Yeah, there's a lot of a sort of free resources <laughs> for our audience to take away. And yes. then, like you say, the responsibility to learn is really our own, isn't it? Absolutely. So, and any questions, I'm sure Jacqueline will be more than happy Absolutely. to answer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you.